welcome you to the House of the Lord this day for the December 13th of 2020, the third Sunday of Advent. Who we are, who are we, and what are we about? We are St. John's, growing in Jesus and spreading his saving grace. And we have a Bible verse for this month. It is, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. How true and how appropriate that we give Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit praise and glory forevermore, for they truly deserve it because of their love and grace to us. During our service today, you may hear a little banging and some extra noise as they are working on the roof today as we are taping. They were so dedicated and faithful, they even worked on Thanksgiving Day. So, our thanks to the Lord and to the workers for their work uh, in making our building secure. These being the special announcements for the day, we do join in the first hymn, hymn 338, Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus, and may the Lord bless our time in His house today. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have 
sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Truly, the Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not turn back to falling. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That the glory may dwell in our land. Yes, the Lord will give us good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. So in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring of the, that the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and body and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We prepare our hearts for the hearing of the Holy Gospel as we join in the Alleluia and verse. <coughs> And 
and all our ornaments all have stories to them. This one I got from my mother-in-law, and it reminds me of what the old, old, old Christmas tree ornaments used to look like. And then I have a set of ornaments that my husband's aunt made for me. These are little candles like. I have four red ones and one white one. And it reminds me of the advent calendars that we have. Although our advent calendars are blue and purple. Um, mine are red. So I get to put on really cool um, ornaments on my tree. And then, um, what else do we do to get ready for Christmas? My son has already started baking. He made me some cookies. And don't we also go out and get Christmas presents and get them all wrapped up in beautiful, beautiful packages. Today, Mr. Neighbor read some words from the epistle of the Thessalonians, uh, where, where we talk, where Paul talks about being ready and being always joyful, always looking forward to the future. And I bring that to us today as we prepare for Jesus' celebration, the celebration of Jesus' first coming. But along with that, we also want to remember that we want to be re ready always for Jesus' second coming when he comes in glory with the sound of a trumpet to take us all to be with him in heaven forever. With that, let's hold our hands and you can say the prayer along with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your one and only Son to the world to live as one of us, to die for our sins, but most importantly to come back alive again to remind us of the resurrection that we too will experience on that final day. Help us to remember that you are here with us now and you will be with us in the future. As we remember those things, let us be joyful in your second coming and bring others to know about our joy so that they too can experience your love, your forgiveness, and your joy. In your precious name we pray as we prepare for your second coming. Amen. With that, we'll sing the hymn, Silent Night.
mercy, and the peace of our living and loving Lord be in your hearts, and be seen in those things that you think and say and do each day. This is the third Sunday of Advent. It is the Sunday when we celebrate the joy that comes to us because of the birth of Jesus. And so we look at the epistle lesson for today from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. So here we are, December 13. Christmas is coming soon. It's under two weeks away. As the cheer of Christmas, the reality of the incredible incarnation of God, the miracle of the manger come into your heart yet? As I thought about this text for today, I wondered again what it must have been like for Joseph and for Mary. Approached by the angel with the miraculous message that interrupted their plans and brought terrible turmoil to their perfectly planned lives, they're no strangers to Christmas hustle and bustle. A census, an unplanned pregnancy, at least not planned by them, a marriage beginning on unsure footing, a long journey by an about-to-pop-pregnant woman, a stable for sanctuary against the cold, unjust world. Joseph and Mary were familiar with the hustle and bustle, with trials and trouble. And I wonder what their thoughts were, what their mood was, as they prepared for the celebration of the birth of the Savior that first. Christmas night. So here we are, December 13. Christmas is coming soon, two weeks away. And we, what do we find ourselves talking about? Have you got your shopping done? Are you ready for Christmas? What are you doing for Christmas? Are you going anywhere with this COVID-19 virus? What are you getting the kids? I just don't have any idea yet. They already have everything. And the cheer of Christmas seems it's just over the next shopping list. It seems the reality of the incredible incarnation is put on hold until we're ready. Until the shopping is done, the turkey cooked, the family fed, the presents opened, the excitement done, the wrappings that once covered packages with glitter and glee now tossed aside into the garbage, and then, woo, maybe a little time, a moment to memorialize, a thank you given to the Lord above that everything went well, that everyone liked their presence, that we can finally be happy this Christmas. But there were no cheerfully wrapped gifts that first Christmas. There was no welcome for these members of the royal family of David, not even in their own hometown. There was no fancy prepared meal, no hand no glad-handed greetings among family. No large meal and then rest for the Holy Family in that stable long, long ago. What did they have to be happy about? What would have brought Christmas cheer to this newly married couple bringing a child from heaven into the world? What would have let them be sure 
sure that God loves them or that he even knew that they were alive. What would bring joy to this smelly stable and these poor travelers with a new baby? What? What indeed? Well, you know the answer. The answer is the child. A child always brings focus, the promise of new life. There's a joy of bringing joy to a baby that just makes you smile and makes the hardest of hearts melt. But this baby came not just to bring joy to Joseph and Mary. This baby came to bring joy to the entire world. Joy to the world, we say. The Lord has come. This was Jesus, the Savior, the promised Messiah, whose very name proclaims the Lord saves. This baby, the hope of Israel, the hope of the world, the gift of God, this truly perfect, tiny, helpless baby is indeed the incarnate God, Emmanuel, God with us. And they knew it. Or at least they had been told. The angel spoke to both Mary and Joseph. Mary knew. And even if Joseph may have had his doubts about his new bride, Mary knew that this birth was not the result of any human relations. This birth is truly a gift from God. In fact, she remained a virgin until after the birth. Jesus. And I would venture to say that the more they focused on Jesus, the more this holy family focused on the fact that this child is God, come to save us, the more they considered what an incredible miracle they had taken part in, the more they saw this baby as the hope of Israel and their hope the more they focused on the great gift of God, the more peace, the more joy, the more hope, the more assurance they have of the love of God. You see, it's about where we focus our attention. If Joseph and Mary had focused on the smelly stable or the lack of privacy or the offense of the innkeeper or the government's intrusion into their lives through the census, there would be no peace. But focusing on Jesus, the gift of God, and how in the busy bustle of the census, God found a warm, dry place for his son to be born. How God brought a birth announcement through the angels and through a star. But our focus is on the miracles God has accomplished. Then there is peace. It reminds me of what St. Paul shared with us in his letter to the church at Philippi. He wrote, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then Paul continues in his letter, focusing on our focus, and notice the result. Finally, brothers, he writes, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So here we are.
December 13th. Christmas is coming soon, less than two weeks away. Where is our heart focus? What do we find ourselves talking about? You know, there is still time to shift our focus. There's still time to join Mary in pondering all of these things. There's still time to focus Christmas on the Christ, on Jesus, the one who saves us from ourselves and from our misguided focus. The one who shed his blood for us at both the beginning and the end of his earthly life. The one in whom we can have peace. The one about whom we can truly sing joy, joy to the world. Amen. And may God's peace, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Jesus, our true Savior. Amen. Could you join together in confessing our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this point in our service, normally the offerings would be received, but as you know, during this COVID time, we receive them in the church office, either by mailing them in or by bringing them in. And thank you so much for your faithful stewardship of the gifts that God has shared with you. We do turn to the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God guard and defend us from all temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For those who are sick, especially those that whose first names we mentioned before you, Pray, O Lord, that you grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who rejoice in the rich blessings of God, that they always remember the giver of every good gift and give him heartfelt thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. And Lord, there are people whom we know among our family and friends who need to know you or know your love more clearly. Here are silent prayers for those whom we know among our family and friends whom we name in our hearts.
send the Holy Spirit to them to open their hearts to your loving grace and open our hearts and mouths to speak of our joy in trusting you as our Savior. For until your return, we pray, come to the Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. And we pray for those who celebrate birthdays this week, including Olivia Bernakis, Bruce Blockner, David Schmidt, Ashley Buck, Rachel Hamlock, Judy Minders, Kevin Conrad, and Christy Carter. As we are your children, Lord, renew our faith in your forgiveness, your presence in our life, and our response of faithfully living as your child. For until your return, we pray. Come and with me, Lord Jesus. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We join in the hymn, Hark the Glad Sound of the Savior Come. Jesus. 